And good evening, everyone. It's the 20th of March, Tuesday evening. I want to thank everybody for coming. I should I should throw it to someone, shouldn't I? Uh, <laughs> no, that's Sue's job, and she's not here. Sue did such a good job last week, didn't she? Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't do without this without you. You coming is what makes it possible for me to learn and to share what I learned with you. For those that are watching it recorded, I hope you get some value from it as well. So we'll go ahead and share the screen, and we'll get started. That actually sounded decent. <laughs> Yes, it did. <laughs> I've been doing this a long time. Something should roll out of my mouth like it's supposed to, you know. Um, so let's go right to the sharing. If I could go back in time, I would go back to my favorite author is, does this need to be bigger for anyone? Because I like it when it's like this because I can see you guys. It's good. Um, I heard your head shaking, Dorothy. Uh, <laughs> uh, the music I enjoy listening to is what I am most grateful for today is and what I want to share most today is so uh, Tony why don't we start with you and then you throw it to someone okay well if I could go back in time I would go back to Boston University and study art for five years just learn more and more about art I would, uh, that's what I always wanted to do. So, yeah, that's, interesting. that's what I would go back to. I don't have any really favorite author. There's too many that I like. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, so. The music I enjoy listening to is music. <laughs> All of it. <laughs> I don't care what it is, it's music. You like jazz. But my favorite is jazz. Yeah, jazz is your favorite. And I'm most grateful for today because I was able to do a little walking today, even though my knee is giving me hell. Oh, no. He should be off of it, but he's not listening to me. I, I could spank him. Uh, <laughs> what I want to share most today is that I'll be better tomorrow. I oh, sure. What a good time you had with your son. Well, yeah. Well, I had a great time with my son. He was here just harassing me for five days and uh, <laughs> aggravating us. <laughs> No, no. We went and played golf. We had a great time. We had a really, really great time together. And then Sunday was a very good day because we had all four of us. We had Connie and I and Tony Jr. and my son-in-law, Jared. So we went and played golf. Well, we want to hit golf balls all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Who you throw it to, Tony? Who you going to throw it to? Yeah, but he had a good time. He really did. Uh, he got home uh, this morning at one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And then I'm sure he had to go to work at eight. So. Yeah. Mm. It's early. But he, I haven't talked to him since he got home. So I'm gonna see what happens in a couple of days. I don't want to call him right away. <laughs> he was like, Why did you do this to me? No. I'm not <laughs> are you Are you done? I'm done. Oh, okay. So uh, that was nice. Thank you. Listen, <laughs> would you throw it to somebody? Tony, would you pick somebody out? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. That's the lady with all the birds, better known as. <laughs> yeah, I know you can hear them, too. Um, uh -huh. If I can go back in time, I would go back to the Bronx. This way I can see all my family, like grandparents included, and old uh -huh. friends. Uh, my favorite author is like Tony. There's too many. I enjoy too many of them. They're, they're all really good. Is there one book that comes to mind? No, not really. Okay. And uh, music I enjoy listening to is romantic classical. It's just my favorite. What I am most grateful for today is we didn't get hit with those horrible storms. I was, my nerves were like raw listening right. to the weather report. Yeah. So that, that's it. Oh, okay, Martha. <laughs> um, if I could go back in time, I would go back to when I was between the ages of um, eight and fourteen, when we lived with my grandmother and grandfather, who was never there. But uh, my grandmother taught me a lot because my mom had to work because there was so many of us. Yeah. My favorite author is, I have a lot of them, but because of Gone with the Wind being my favorite all-time book, movie, everything, um, I would say 
Martha Mitchell. Mm -hmm. And the music I enjoy listening to is most, most any kind. I grew up with music because my dad worked where he put the records on the jukeboxes at, um, at clubs and restaurants and, and stuff. So I grew up with all kinds of music because he couldn't put in like the Eagles Club. He couldn't put in the ones like where the teenagers hung out. <laughs> so I learned to like a lot of music. I'm most grateful for today that Dick has had a, a good day today. Um, he's eat, he ate better today and he's working on drinking his water because the doctor told him yesterday he has to drink. Um, he didn't have the best report yesterday, but mm. a day at a time. And what I want to share most today is um, all the support and stuff that everybody is giving us. And the doctors are just being super uh, because it isn't, it isn't easy right now. Tell them about your chair, how that worked out. Oh, yes, I, I was, I, they were going to bring it when they had a doctor's appointment and he has to go to it. <clears throat> and I, uh, they called me and I called them back and the lady was super nice. Marsha, they don't know, they, Marsha, they don't know that you didn't, they don't know about the good news. Uh -oh. <laughs> that you don't have to buy a chair. Oh, yeah, we don't have to buy the chair because um, Excellent. I remembered that the girl that bought chair that Dick used to sit in in our old place. Um, that she said she didn't really like it. So I said, well, I'll go see if she'll sell it back to me. And um, she said she had given it to somebody. And uh -huh. she told me who. And I got thinking, I wonder why she wants it. She rides her bike. Her husband does. He's 89. And he does uh, with a roller bar out from his hands and knees. He does 100 of them every day. And he oh. walks 25 miles every day. And so I'm wondering, and so I said, well, I'll stop and ask her. And she said, I don't like it. I don't want it. It's too big. Uh, Norma gave it to um, her grandson who moved back up north and didn't take it. So we got it back. They bought it over and bought it in the house and set it up for me. How nice. So coming to get the other one that Dick couldn't stay in. How nice. So, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Marsha is working very hard on getting through the situations without, uh, it, you know, bringing her down and get, creating all that anxiety in her. She's doing an excellent job. The chair they got for Dick, uh, literally the back and the legs move at the same time, and it threw Dick out of it. So after I spent oh, all that time, yeah. he did. He uh, yeah, she, and then she was going to get this love seat that cost another four hundred dollars, which was twelve hundred dollars, and so. Uh, as a result of that, I said, Marsha, why don't you, why don't we look for the right chair for you? And in doing that, we canceled the order. But then we talked about this other chair and it all worked out. So it was, it was, it was amazing. And they even went there and set it up. Okay. Throw it, you throw it to someone, Marsha. Um, Lisa. <laughs> uh, if I could go back in time, I would go back to... Uh, when my children were little toddlers and babies, oh, and I was in the Marine Corps, that was like a very happy time. Mm -hmm. uh, my favorite author is I don't have one anymore, so but I do enjoy self help books. Yes. Uh, uh, the music I enjoy listening to is It Depends on My Moods. Um, I like oldies when I'm cleaning, um, and like new when I'm exercising. No. What I am most grateful for today is that I do not live here. I am just visiting. <laughs> <laughs> and what I want to share most today is I miss home. Oh, we miss you. Oh, Dorothy. Oh. If I could go back in time, I'd go back to a month before Dawn had her surgery. Yes. And, uh, and of course, that followed with my losing Joe. So I'd go back to before those two things happened. Um, I like a lot of authors, but my favorite is Nicholas Sparks. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Uh, the music I enjoy, list, I enjoy all music, but the one I listen to most is Yanni Radio. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm most grateful, I have so many things to be grateful for. I, I I can't even pick one. I mean, 
health and mom being okay and just so many things. Um, what I want to share most today is I'm freezing too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, it's, <laughs> it's been snowing all day here and I had to go out in it twice. Oh, it's oh, not yeah. snowing here, but it's very cold. Very, it's, I mean, the temperature is not as cold, but it's the wind and it really feels cold. Hmm. So that's all. I'm all done. Okay. So I guess it's only me left, right? Okay. I'll throw okay. it to you, Connie. Thank you. So if I could go back in time, I'd go back to like Lisa said when the kids were little. But that is my favorite time in life. And my favorite author is, uh, I'm going to say Bruce Wilkinson. He wrote the uh, uh, Jabez, the book of Jabez, and it's made me read every book he ever wrote. I feel like he's sitting right there talking to me. I really like him. And the music I enjoy listening to is the 60s. I like all music like Dorothy, but I love listening to the 60s. Uh, what I'm most grateful for today is uh, just being able to do this, be here, be with Tony, be able to take care of him and Tony Jr. and just be a fly on the wall and watch them have such a wonderful time after being separated for 50 years. It's very special. And what I want to share most today is, I wish you were home too, Lisa. I actually felt like this moment was going to come. However, you act with your heart and your head doesn't get involved until it's too late. Uh, and uh, so hurry home, honey. So stay on track. I think everybody in here knows everything. Is everybody in the Lean and Green Challenge? I don't know. <laughs> no, we've gotten paid on our challenge, so you got credits there. Um, and we'll just go right on to our uh, exercise in the overweight mind, the truth behind why you're not losing weight. This week we're covering the 80-20, the 80% psychology and the 20% mechanics. This was really good for me, and I suspect it's going to be really good for you guys too. Um, a healthy outside starts from the inside. I'm going to get help tonight with reading all this because I have uh, I had an attack today with my gallbladder and I don't really feel well. So I will, uh, well, I go and uh, they're going to do a colonoscopy and go up it in the back way, but they have told me it's the duck that was left in there that if the gallbladder had stones in it, it probably has it in it too. And that's probably even at convention, I was suffering with that. So they just didn't finish the job. And uh. so we'll be over with you. So we're talking about mechanics, and then we're talking about psychology. And the mechanics of weight loss is always the eat fewer calories, exercise five days a week, eat less sugar, eat more vegetables, mix cardiovascular training with weight training, balance your macronutrients and type. Sound advice, but they're all mechanics. And the 80-20 is 80% psychology and 20% mechanics. So as we talk about mechanics, that is going to really, uh, is going to turn a light bulb on for you. Each of these steps is valuable and should be implemented as you strive to achieve a healthy body, but relying solely on mechanical habits won't create lasting permanent change in your lifestyle. 80% of your health and wellness relies on your psychological mindset, overcoming psychological barriers. Got that voice always whispering in your ear, don't you? Mm -hmm. So, have you ever seen the Biggest Losers? Have y'all have y'all seen that show? Has oh, anyone yeah. ever watched the whole season? I never watched the whole season. No, I never did. Yeah. Now, where triple digit numbers and weight loss is the norm, watching these contestants lose so much weight is inspiring. The incredible transformation is the reason the show has stayed on the air for so long. We all would love to think these contestants step off the stage and go on to live healthy and happy lives, but with their families and friends. That's spelled wrong lives. That bothers me. <laughs> uh, this is Allie Vincent, and she was the first woman to, I'm going to bring this up here. She was the first woman to actually win the, um, 
Well, for the first time in four seasons, this year's biggest loser was a woman. Because we all know it's easier for guys to lose weight, right? You can see Andy. Okay, not yeah. anymore. Oh, you broke that mold. Okay, yeah. broke that mold. <laughs> not anymore. For Holly Vincent, that meant a lot of, uh, really, sweat and a lot of tears. <laughs> Oh my God. When I entered The Biggest Loser, I was 234 pounds. The hardest thing I ever did was stand in line to be on The Biggest Loser. I finally told the truth and I realized that I, you know, I had a problem and I just decided like this is the opportunity of a lifetime, you know, and I want to do this for me. So Allie weighed in at an all time high of 234 pounds for her. It's been six months since she got home from The Biggest Loser. Here's Allie before. And Allie's weight today coming out, Allie! <laughs> Was The Biggest Loser sort of like a last resort for you? Well, yeah, I, I dug myself into this big, deep, dark hole, and I didn't know how to get out. You know, yeah. it was five pounds, five pounds. That was somewhat controllable. But then it was 50, and then it was 100, and I was like, how do I get out of here? Yeah. Were you nervous when you got home? Were you nervous about keeping it off? Yeah, I was nervous, and I kind of, you know, the truth is, is I kind of spiraled. I, I got home, and I was like, what, what do I do? What do I do without the ranch? I went out, I, had par I partied with my friends, and I just was like, I woke up, and I was like, this isn't me. I don't want this life anymore. All day, I just thought about it, and I didn't post, and I was depressed, and I was embarrassed, and I was sad, and I was like, I can't even, like, I'm at such a place in my life right now that I can't even post on Facebook about this experience that changed my life in such a drastic way, where that I even have this Facebook to post to, and now I'm hiding, like I was hiding. What was more kind of like a, a really, um, kind of check-in kind of experience was Facebook had just come out with that live Facebook, right? And so, um, of course, they wanted me to do live interviews because there was a, a big pre presence. It was our biggest team yet. We raised the most money yet. We were going to have a, a banquet. And so I did, and I was interviewing, and all the comments were about how fat I was. So I really started hiding after that. I'm at a point right now where it's so easy to be where, like, if I keep going in the direction I'm going, like, I don't know if I'll ever come back. Like, I don't know if I'll ever be able to have the strength to do something different. And on my anniversary, I, I just, I didn't get out of bed all day. And I, I just was... I was ashamed. I was just ashamed. I was embarrassed. I was like, I, I don't know. I just, I just, I don't know. It was a low point. It was like probably my lowest point. I won the biggest loser. You know, I was the first female to win the biggest loser. Like I'm Ali Vincent. Like I'm supposed to be strong. I'm supposed to know how to do this. I do know how to do it. Like I do know what I need to do. Like it's not, and that's like, it, so there's, I was just beating myself up and it was just, um, I don't know, it was just like, it was liberating. And because I felt so liberated in that moment and after that and kind of going through it, I knew that I had to, I had to do it on my Facebook. I was like kind of ready, like, you know, I'm like, and so, and I, and I read like every single comment and every single comment I would like, it would have the, a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of anxiety, like who was going to be the one, who was going to be the one where I was going to like make, ban them from my Facebook, you know, and there wasn't one, there wasn't one single one, not one person, like not one person. And I was like, oh my gosh. And it's pretty incredible. Honestly, I, I'm very humbled by it in uh, I don't know why I thought I couldn't share, you know, like I'm so, I'm like, you're so silly, Allie. Like for me, it's not about a number this time, even though a number is a way for me to track and, and I do know at a specific number how I feel, you know, in that number range, but it is about feeling my best self. Like I want to be my best self. I want to feel good about myself. I want to have the energy. I want to have the endurance. I want to have the confidence. I want to feel beautiful. I want to, to I want to love myself at 
any size and throughout the sizes. Hi, YouTubers. Uh, I'm excited to give you an update. Of Better stop. <laughs> I hear them. They're fine. So, when she got home, <laughs> goes Marcia. so when she got home from the Biggest Loser rant, she did not know what to do with herself. All of the structure, exercise, the regiment, and the changes in diet were no longer present in her daily life. She did not have a coach screaming in her ear to keep pushing it on the treadmill. Eventually, the mechanics of her weight loss journey broke down. Dorothy, you want to read a little bit? So what happened? Her meals became less strict. She didn't <coughs> exercise as much. She had the liberty to go out and have drinks with her friends whenever she pleased. The National Institute of Diabetes and Digestive and Kidney Diseases followed season eight contestants and found that 13 of the 14 contestants gained the weight back after the bright lights of the TV had dimmed. We don't have to look very far for each more, for more health transformations, skewing the focus towards mechanics than psychology and mindset. Lisa, you want to pick up? Uh, consider people who opt for bariatric surgery. In bariatric surgery shrinks, shrinks your stomach either by using a gastric band to minimize it or by removing part of it. Individuals undergoing this procedure are likely obese and have the best of intentions. They want to live healthier. They don't want to die young. They want to shed the emotional baggage accompanying their excessive weight. Some patients find success and report weight loss over the long term. Unfortunately, many patients gain weight back over time. Reducing the size of your stomach is about as mechanical as you can get. Yes, bariatric surgery is paired with counseling, but the counseling isn't geared toward understanding the patient's psychology. It aims at advising the patient about proper food choices, how much to eat, and what exercise regimen to follow. Sound familiar? More mechanics. Changing the food you eat and the way you exercise is essential to achieving a healthy body and lifestyle. But what deserves greater focus and energy for a lasting foundation of health is your mindset. Marsha Birdbaum, you want to read? Sure, sure. In truth, no matter who you are, the process and mechanics of your health will break down. Even the most elite athletics and top, perform and top performers have off days. Maybe it's a birthday or Thanksgiving dinner or a night out with friends. There is going to come a time when you eat too much and exercise too little. No one is perfect. I love the cupcakes chasing her. <laughs> I love it. The difference, the difference between these top performers and the average human being is that their mindset and psychology pick them up when they fall. They will wake up the next day and get right back to work without blinking an eye. Go ahead, bird mom. Okay. They won't spend time telling themselves how horrible they are or how they shouldn't have had so much food. For them, those moments of indulging are the exception and not the rule. They feel deserving of a good body. They are willing to put in the work and they are living a happy, healthy lifestyle. Eating a handful of Christmas cookies, skipping a workout, and drinking one too many glasses of wine are the exception. Okay. Who wants to go next? You want to start again, Dorothy? Sure. Your psychology and mindset are crucial for lasting health and wellness. Setback happens to everyone. No one gets a free pass. By taking the time to focus on your mental well-being, you will be able to bounce right back when you stumble. Failure is not an option. Look up, stand up, get up, and bounce back. Instead of making the donut in the morning the rule, it will become the exception. You won't let one mistake build momentum into another. A proper mindset will stop a bad habit in its tracks and won't allow it to persist. Lisa? 
You can't lose 10, 20, 30 pounds and keep it off until you first focus on losing your limiting beliefs, negative thoughts, and emotional baggage. Think about it. The same person who created the mess you're in you is trying to get you out. The same psychological you anyway. I can't read that. In order to find some permanence in your weight loss results, you need to change as a person. You need to change your mindset. I would like to interject here yes. that I'm completely out of my zone, not doing the exercise that I'm usually doing, uh -huh. but um, my healthy habits are intrinsic in me now. I had Red Robin yesterday. Uh -huh. and it, it really, <laughs> that's <laughs> matter than the rule. It really hurt to put that Red Robin in my food accounting of the day but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very proud that that is like this said the exception not the rule and Good for you. it's serving me well it's serving me well out of my comfort zone Dorothy yeah. how are you doing with your um you you reached your goal you're still at your goal no I'm I'm not <laughs> okay talk to us <laughs> you about what <laughs> Where are you? you can't be far from your goal oh no I'm not far from my goal but I wanted to go in the other direction yeah <laughs> so I haven't gone down any further I, re I really do want to go in the opposite direction you so is not, your goal your I'm goal not, I'm, I'm not stimulated by this particular challenge I'm not. no no and it's not a challenge it is something it's a bridge it's not a challenge. Uh, I think where this, and that's a good point, because I feel it too, and I've told everybody not to do it uh, in terms of weighing in and all of that. But it still puts us, what I, what I enjoy, it's still us. It's still our teachable moments. It's still uh, those of us in the room. But the challenge itself, you can see what you like about the challenge, because it's all mystic. Yes, yes. I, I think that it is I'm not weighing in was not good mm -hmm. I weighed in I should have weighed in I should yeah have weighed in. I did and I've already lost what I needed to lose <laughs> I'm very excited because I, I've been at 175 and I am almost down beyond the 160 wow that's great I'm very very excited I bought some pants at Dick's and I bought extra larges and I had to go back and exchange them for mediums today Wow, that's great. Better hurry home, Lisa. You'll be a twin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get some feedback here on today's lesson. What's one thing that uh, that stands out in your mind and what we heard tonight in tonight's lesson? Let's start with you, Martha. I, I think the my problem is I do let my emotionals feelings and stuff interfere a lot with the plan, uh, with the program and things. And I think learning that it is mindset and, and I have been really working on it, especially with my stress and like that. And I, I really, I am amazed that I have not just completely, I mean, I've had a couple of bad moments, very bad moments. <laughs> Yesterday was one of them. Come here, baby. But they couldn't find his heart. Come here. Um, kind of like, um, well, I, I'm, I'm handling it fairly well. I think. Yeah, with me. There we go. But, um, no, we, we haven't been able to get his blood pressure um, when he stands up. And when the pulmonary doctor was trying to see how much his pulse was running in that, he said he couldn't even hear the heartbeat. He couldn't find it. Oh. So we're just going... But Dick has done really well today. He ate today. He's drinking today. And so, there is that mindset you're talking about too. Yes. Yeah. And that's the, and that is, um, I think the biggest thing that Dr. O'Brien said was just before we got done with the our visit, he said, "Medicine is not a." What do you think? Medicine is not a guarantee, but he she he said. How you think about things and look at them. And if you have a thought in your mind that you are going to get better, you just might. And I, I, I was like, oh my gosh, this sounds like Dr. A and all of my friends and everything. 
So, so I think that hit Dick too because he's been much more cooperative today. Thank you, Marcia. Dorothy, what is something that you took from this today? Well, I do really feel that uh, I do. I do have the attitude that um, when I am treating myself, that that is a treat, and mm -hmm. that I will go back to my goal. So yes. that, that's something different than having a diet mentality. It's, it's different. It's a health goal mentality. And I think that's really true. Um, you, you can never change things if you think of it as a diet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Lisa? I wholeheartedly agree. And like I said before, the, the healthy habits are serving me so well because I don't struggle anymore because it's in the front of my mind that I want to be healthy and have less pain that more than I want whatever my old demons used to be, whatever foods that I would get when my mind was weaker. So it's all about mindset and like the treat part. That was a treat yesterday, but mm -hmm. I didn't go through the whole, oh my gosh, how, how bad is that? And, and slip further down and have something else bad. That was just it. Like it was talking about the athletes. Yeah, that's good. I got back on mm -hmm. it today. Perfect. And that's saying a lot for me because there's, it's, the struggle for me is there's, I've eliminated bad stuff, but I don't need so much good stuff that my, my one, I have to be very mindful of what my one is and is so limited that I almost get bored of what I will eat. But again, I want health more than I want anything that to eat I shouldn't have. Thank you. Marsha. Bird mom. Yeah, it's um, basically uh, a repeat of what everybody says. It's really the mindset because when you look at those um, biggest losers and they've lost weight so beautifully and they gained it back, I've gone through that so many times. And now that I'm losing again, I don't want to have to do that again. You know, start gain it back and then lose it one more time. So um, the mindset is very important to me. And if I go out and eat, have a regular meal, it's just going to be a treat and something that I enjoy. But it's not going to sabotage my whole um, eating program because I want to be healthy more than the gratification of the food. So yeah. it is mindset. But it is amazing that it's 80-20. And yeah. you can really yeah. see it is 80-20. And the mechanics, the point they make, and that's the thing with me that struck me, is the mechanics are the same. It doesn't matter what program you're on because they're designed to work if you follow them. But what, what happens to you after that? You know, the person with the bariatric surgery has physically changed their physiology. Their body will no longer be the same. And yet, when they get through with what they're doing, the, the chances of them growing, getting the weight back is like everybody else's. And uh, it's just the mechanics again. But uh, yeah, the, the most important part is what we're all doing and is trying to get that healthy mind to go along with the healthy body. Tony, you want to say what you want to say? Let me unmute you. You were disturbing everybody. <laughs> yeah, you, I'm, I'm muted. No, I unmuted oh. you. Yes. You unmuted me? Yes. Well, okay. Did you get anything I, from that? Yeah. Uh, yes, I did. And you know, my mindset has been don't eat, <laughs> and I, I I got to eat more and I have to exercise more. But in my mindset, I said, oh, I'm okay. But I'm not okay. I need to go to the gym. I have to do things. But now I got an excuse. I got a bad knee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the reason. That's not an excuse. All right, so let's go no, into okay. whatever our next lesson is. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing so I can stop recording. Connie, and Connie I have something to interject. Okay, let me keep recording. Um, okay. For those of us who think that it is successful to get the lap band surgery, I, I have um, clients or potential clients that have a lap band. And I had um, asked nutrition support about how to handle a client that has the lap band, okay? And uh, it's, it's, my name is Cindy, and I'm a dietetic technician. 
registered on the Take Shape for Life nutrition support team. So this was before we became Optavia. I'm mm -hmm. happy to answer your question about your client. I asked about, you know, how, how to present this to them. The only slight adjustment for the lap band is to divide the lean and green meal because it may be too large to eat all at once. Your mm -hmm. client can split it and eat seven times per day or eat small servings from the lean and green meal with the fuelings. Now, that has so much changed a person's life that they can't fit things into their stomach unless they go hog wild and they stretch their stomach again. Oh, so being going through that procedure is life changing. It's actually that people die in that procedure. Oh, oh absolutely. We had one person uh, that owned a restaurant right here in town that did die from that. But but those that live, the procedure makes it. Um, you can't enjoy life like you can if you learn to change your mindset and change your habits yeah. the way that we do. Yeah. Because that, and and it, it just it's amazing that I I know a lot of people that go through with the, this bariatric surgery. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to refer back to something you said, mommy, about um, your your mechanics. You were specifically speaking about exercise, but your mechanics should be like brushing your teeth, automatic. Mm -hmm. And it's my belief that the the mindset reinforces that. So I think it's great. I remember that a lot. Your exercise, mm -hmm. it, it follows your mechanics mm -hmm. are, are actually automatic for me now. Yeah. Even out of my environment. I'm not getting my water aerobics, but I'm getting anywhere from three to 6,000 steps a day. Not as healthy mm -hmm. exercise for me, but I'm still getting exercise. Are you, get, are you getting close to this being over with for you? Or you, you're in there for even longer? Um. It, it may be May, close to June. I'm hoping sooner. It depends on her mobility. Mm -hmm. She has six. She has five more weeks and no weight bearing. Yeah, on, but but you have to also think of yourself. There's other people can be hired in that position. Yeah, uh, you can't let it drop. You can't let it take your good attitude from you, where you have accomplished and gotten yourself to such a good place mentally that this well, becomes an uh, option. Once she doesn't necessarily need me to move her around and transport her, then other arrangements can be made, yes. Yeah. So. All, right. All right. Anybody else want to make any comments before I stop recording? Okay. Enjoyed it.